Hello and thank you for joining me. Today is a story time. I will be sharing my personal experiences getting a copper IUD or a copper coil as it is more commonly known as in the UK. Basically, what is a copper IUD? So this is my old copper IUD. I had this one in for five years. This is, I think it's called the Nova T. I'm not entirely sure. But basically it is a little plastic T-shaped device with a copper coil wrapped around it. And then there's a little string here. So this part is inserted into your cervix. And then this part, the little strings hang out of your cervix and you can feel for them to make sure that your coil has not moved in the month. So it's very simple, very easy. You don't feel it once it's inside you. You know, you never know it's there. It's completely fuss free. And that's why I really like this form of birth control. So basically the copper alters the cervical mucus. So it makes it a really inhospitable environment for sperm to survive. And also it makes it impossible for your egg to be fertilized. So it's well not impossible, but it makes it damn near harder. So as a little bit of background about myself, I am 27 years old. I have had two copper coils in my lifetime. I had the first one inserted when I was 21 and that was a five year coil and then I had a second one inserted about a year ago and that is the 10 year coil. So basically what is a copper IUD? Well let's just jump in, it is a non-hormonal form of birth control. I used to be on the pill, I had microgynon for I think I was on that for about three or four years. I decided to change my birth control to a non-hormonal method just because I wanted something that was a little bit more convenient as well. I couldn't really be bothered with taking a pill daily and also I liked the idea of having something that was a little bit more like long lasting. So as I say, the copper IUD can last for up to 10 years depending on which model you get. So that would be a tip <laughs> for number one. If you are getting your copper IUD inserted, make sure that you know which one it is and make sure you have that conversation with your healthcare practitioner. When I got mine first inserted, I didn't actually know it was the five year one until after it had been inserted. And I think if I had known that, then I would have said, hey, can I have the 10 year one please? Because I wasn't planning on taking it out anytime soon. And I'll be honest, it's a bit of a painful procedure. So it's not something that you might want to repeat if you don't need to, you know? I went to a family planning clinic and they referred me onwards to a different one that does the insertion because not every clinic does it uh, in the UK, which I didn't know, but uh, I found that out. So the first clinic I went to, the gynecologist basically uh, got me to undress and I was relaxed. I was on the bed and I had my legs up and she tried to insert the coil but she couldn't and she just said that my cervix was too small and she wasn't able to perform the uh, insertion which was a bit of a shame because I was really excited to get it done that day. I went with a friend of mine and she got one and uh, probably a bit of a weird like friend bonding story but she got hers done and I wanted to get mine done on the same day just so that we could both be kind of like in misery together. Anyway so basically what ended up happening is that she got hers done but I couldn't get mine done that same day. The doctor basically referred me on to a different clinic, one that would be able to perform the procedure using a paracervical block. The paracervical block is between two and six injections that are into your vagina and it numbs the area so you don't feel things going in so they can be a bit more forceful with inserting it. However, I have learned that in the UK they don't really like using that because I'm assuming it costs money and that's why that they don't want to do it needlessly in their opinion. Um, I personally think that it should be for every woman who wants it because it is quite a painful procedure getting this inserted in the first place and if I had had the option to receive this uh, numbing injection then I would take it personally but there we go you know I think women should be able to have that option to choose right. Um, so anyway the story time doesn't end there my friends. I went to the second clinic, so I was lying down, pants off, you know, just chilling in the chair. She's uh, got the speculum inside me, so it goes in and then opens your vagina so they can see into the cervix. Actually it's kind of like me looking into the camera lens right now, just like a little bit of a gaping hole. Anyway, so as I'm in this chair, you know, legs akimbo, she goes to me, you know what? your cervix looks like it might be okay. So I'm going to try putting it in without the paracervical block. At this point, I was like, oh, really? 
but you could just use the paracetamol block. And she was like, no, no, we're going to do it without. And so she did. And it was painful, I'll be honest. It was quite like, initially the insertion feels like a sharp scratch and then it feels like period cramping. And then it was fine. I felt totally fine for about 10 minutes. And then I had the worst cramps of my life. It was so painful. The clinic was actually luckily quite near my friend's house. So I went back to her house and I just kind of like stayed beached on the sofa for like the entire day. I did not leave. I was in so much pain because it just felt like the most violent period of my life. It was so uncomfortable. And that period pain lasted for about three days and it did slowly progress and became less painful, but it was a very painful, process it was like the worst period pain of my life and so when it came to get it removed five years later I was a little bit worried that it was going to be very painful so I went to the clinic and I got it removed and it didn't hurt at all I didn't even feel it I know some women personally find getting the speculum inserted to be very painful I personally didn't find that painful at all it's not fun obviously um, it does feel a little bit uncomfortable, it feels a bit weird, you know, you're just kind of like, oh, that's, that's a bit too much. When I was getting my IUD removed, I decided to get a, another one put back in at that same procedure, so basically it was all done in one process. So as I was getting this one removed, I got my new copper IUD reinserted. So as you might guess, I really like this form of birth control. I have chosen to go for it again, which goes to show that I do find it very helpful and very useful. Obviously the copper IUD does not protect against STDs. Then you will likely want to be using condoms because that is the only way to prevent the spread of STIs. I used my copper IUD. I'm with a long-term partner. We've both been tested, so all is good. And basically it is a fantastic little, little gadget. I don't have to worry about condoms or getting a pill or having to worry about, I don't know, changing this up. This little guy is going to last me 10 more years inside me, so I don't need to worry about that at all. And the other really great thing about the copper coil is that once you get it removed, you are good to go. You can start trying to conceive immediately. It doesn't have any long lasting effects, which is fantastic. Some women do find that the copper IUD can make their periods more heavy and more uncomfortable just in general. I personally didn't notice the difference. I have been quite lucky in that my periods have been quite regular and normal, normal throughout my life. I've noticed that my periods have become slightly longer. They typically last between five and eight days, depending on my flow and what it's like, but I don't really mind that because it's not an uncomfortable period, generally speaking. And also the trade-off is just so worth it. Another myth as well is that you can't use a menstrual cup alongside an IUD and that is just not true. I've spoken with my gynaecologist and she said that it was totally fine just to make sure that when you do get your IUD inserted, wait at least three menstrual cycles beforehand. It's most likely to reject your new, new buddy. Basically what you want to do is make sure that you do not pull the strings, obviously, because then that can dislodge it, but you just want to be a bit careful and just a bit more, you know, common sense, just that kind of stuff. <laughs> it was such a funny story when I was getting this removed actually, because I asked if I could keep hold of this. I really wanted to keep it as like a souvenir, I suppose. I thought it was quite a funny little little thing to take home and she was like but why why would you want that and I was like just as a souvenir <laughs> I just that was definitely the most embarrassing part because I think she felt that I was being a little bit strange versus like you know just curiosity just learning you know yeah I wanted to see what it looked like because I hadn't actually seen one that had been used before and what it looks like when it's finished sort of thing um I just wanted to know what it was like and there we go also, the IUD is one of the most effective and precise forms of birth control. They are over 99% effective when they are inserted correctly, whereas the pill is around 98% and condoms are around 95%, depending on user infallibility. User fallibility. The IUD is very, very effective. It, in my opinion, it's worth the pain. It's worth plowing through. As I was saying, these do last a really long time and if you want to try to conceive, you can remove it straight away and it doesn't impact your fertility. And also on the flip side of that, what's so great is that once you have this inserted, you are safe, you are protected from pregnancy straight away. Um, so whereas like with the pill, you need to wait 
couple of weeks so that the hormones can kick in and regulate the copper coil however you can if you want go straight to having sex I personally did not because my vagina felt like someone had punched it so what's really cool as well is in the UK it is completely free so thank you NHS for always being bomb um, I think it is such an important service women should be able to choose how they want to use their bodies if they want to reproduce if they don't what kind of birth control they should use all that kind of stuff and access to it should be easy thank you NHS you are although having said that I would totally pay to get it because I think it's just worth it I would pay like couple hundred quid just to be able to have it because it is life-changing I don't think that like renewing for pills or having like jabs in my arm or anything like that there's just nothing that compares to how effective this is and how convenient it is as someone who travels a lot I do not want to be stuck in a foreign country trying to get a refill to, like the depot shot or like some obscure pill because maybe the standard ones don't work or whatever you know I don't want to be faffing around in a pharmacy I don't want to be doing that I'll look at that well with that I'm going to close it up and if you have any questions do let me know I'll be more than happy to answer them and I hope you have a lovely day and look after your vagina bye bye